Hello class 9 students. I hope everyone is studying. So this is our lecture number 8 of the chapter motion. So guys here we will be solving the numericals based on acceleration and equation of motion. Now see here these numericals are of type D. And the formulas here we, we will be using uh, is twice A s equal to V square minus U square. So this is our third kinematical equation right. And second formula is a equal to v minus u by t and this one is for finding out the acceleration clear everyone now see question number one starting from a stationary position rahul battles his bicycle to attain a velocity of 6 meter per second in 30 seconds then he applies brakes such that the velocity of the bicycle comes down to 4 meter per second in the next 5 seconds calculate the acceleration of the bicycle in both the cases Okay, here in both the cases means uh, first case is Rahul pedals his bicycle and then uh, after applying brakes. Okay, now see here this is Rahul who started pedaling from a stationary position that is A where the initial velocity equal to 0 and after reaching the point B uh, where the velocity is 6 meter per second. So the time taken from a point A to B is 30 seconds. So this is time T1 okay now again after applying brakes that velocity of the bicycle comes down to 4 meter per second that is v2 equal to 4 meter per second in the next 5 seconds so the time taken from point b to c that is t2 equal to 5 seconds now write what are the given values here the initial velocity u equal to 0 meter per second velocity v1 equal to 6 meter per second velocity v2 equal to 4 meter per second and time t1 equal to 30 seconds and time t2 equal to 5 seconds so these are all the given values now what we have to find out we have to find out the acceleration a1 and a2 okay now see here the formula we will be using is acceleration formula that is a equal to v minus u by t that is a equal to final velocity minus initial velocity by time okay now see here for finding the acceleration a1 we will be using these values clear so a1 equal to v1 minus u by t1 and for finding out the acceleration a2 we will be using these values so a2 equal to v2 minus v1 by t2 okay now see here let's solve it for case 1 as rahul paddles a1 equal to v1 minus u by t1 okay now put the values so we will get a1 equal to 0 0.2 meter per second square Again, I'm saying don't forget to write the unit. Now, see here for second case, as Rahul applies brakes, A2 equal to V2 minus V1 by T2. Okay, now put the values. So, we will get uh, A2 in minus in negative side, that is minus 0 0.4 meter per second square. Okay, so the answer is the acceleration of the bicycle in the case 1 is 0 0.2 meter per second square. And in the case 2, it is minus 0 0.4 meter per second square. I hope everyone is clear. Next, we will see question number 2. A ball is gently dropped from a height of 20 meter. If its velocity increases uniformly at a rate of 10 meter per second square, what, uh, with what velocity will it strike the ground? After what time will it strike the ground? Okay, now see here. A ball is gently dropped from a height of 20 meter. So uh, at the starting that means the initial velocity it will be u equal to 0 right. And here uh, it's displacement that is height equal to 20 meter. So we will take this as displacement s that is the distance equal to 20 meter okay. And here the acceleration is 10 meter per second per second square it should be second square. Now see here what are the given values. Here the initial velocity u equal to 0 meter per second. Then displacement s equal to 20 meter and acceleration a equal to 10 meter per second square. Now we have to find out the, the velocity and uh, the time. Okay now see here for finding out the velocity we will be using v square equal to u square plus twice as. Uh, so this is our third kinematical equation. Okay, for finding out the velocity then for finding out the time we will be using the acceleration formula that is a equal to v minus u by t okay now let's solve it for finding out the velocity 
we will be using this formula now put the values so v square equal to 0 square plus 2 into 10 into 20 and we will get a v square equal to 400 so v equal to root over 400 therefore v equal to 20 meter per second okay so the velocity is 20 meter per second now see for uh, case 2 that is for finding out the time a equal to v minus u by t then put the value so t equal to first rearrange it and then find the value for t now we know that v is 20 minus uh, initial velocity it is 0 by time 10 so we will get t equal to 20 by 10 so that is t equal to 2 seconds okay so the answer is now for 1 the it strikes the ground with a velocity of 20 meter per second and the time taken to strike the ground is 2 second clear everyone okay just formula based questions now see question number 3 a train starting from rest attains a velocity of 72 km per hour in 5 minutes assuming that the acceleration is uniform now find the acceleration and the distance traveled by the train for attaining this velocity okay now write what are the given values here the given values the initial velocity u equal to 0 because the train started uh, at rest right and therefore initial velocity is 0 and here the final velocity is 72 km per hour it is given in per hour so now convert it into meter per second and we will get the final velocity equal to 20 meter per second uh, so the here total time taken t equal to 5 minutes uh, so convert it into seconds we will get 300 seconds now what we have to find out we have to find out the acceleration and uh, the distance traveled that is s the value for s so here the formula we will be using uh, so for finding out the acceleration you already know it is a equal to v minus u by t and for finding out the distance travel twice a is equal to v square minus u square okay guys now pause the video and try to solve this by yourself because this is uh, just a simple formula based question okay uh, i'm here to help you out so see here let's solve it for finding out the acceleration a equal to v minus u by t so now put the values 20 minus 0 by 300 so we will get 20 by 300 then cancel it and we will get the acceleration a equal to 1 by 15 that is okay uh, be it in fraction so a equal to 1 by 15 meter per second square clear now for finding out the distance travel uh, use this formula so twice a s equal to v square minus u square here we know that uh, u, u equal to 0 okay so twice a s equal to v square minus 0 so s equal to v square by twice a uh, we are just rearranging the formula now see here put the values so 20 square by 20 into 1 by 15 because acceleration we already got here that 1 by 15 meter per second square so we are putting the value here for a now solve it 400 into 15 by 2 so do the calculation okay so distance equal to 3000 meter so it is uh, converted into kilometer so it is 3 kilometer okay and the distance is 3 kilometer so the answer is the acceleration of the train is 1 by 15 meter per second square and the distance traveled is 3 kilometer clear everyone all right now let's see question number four a stone is thrown in a vertically upward direction with a velocity of 5 meter per second if the acceleration of the stone during its motion is 10 meter per second square in the downward direction what will be the height attained by the stone and how much time will it take to reach there okay now see here read the question again if you're getting confused so a stone is thrown in a vertically upward direction so from here to here upward direction a stone is thrown with a velocity of 5 meter per second now write what are the given values so here the initial velocity is 5 meter per second because again read the equation why it is uh, 5 meter per second the initial velocity because the stone is thrown vertically upward direction with a velocity of this mass because the stone is not throwing at rest right that's why this velo initial velocity is not zero its initial velocity is 5 meter per second now if the acceleration of the stone during its motion is 10 meter per second square so here the acceleration of the stone is given that is 10 meter per second square 
okay uh, but before that write the final velocity so final velocity will definitely it will be 0 meter per second now in the downward direction we got to know that uh, the acceleration is 10 meter per second square now in upward uh, acceleration it is definitely the negative 10 meter per second square okay now see here to find out we have to find out the height attained that means we have to find out the distance that is the value for s and the time taken okay so the formula here we will be using is for finding out the height attained uh, we will be using the third kinematical equation that is twice as equal to v square plus minus u square v square minus u square okay and for finding out uh, the time we will be using the acceleration formula that is a equal to v minus u by t guys again see here here the acceleration it is a uh, uh, negative sign is here because the acceleration is in upward direction and since it is in upward direction uh, it is negative sign okay okay now let's solve it for finding out the height attained now put a value but before that rearrange it so s equal to v square minus u square by twice a so we will get 0 square minus 5 square by 2 into minus 10 and we will get a uh, distance s equal to 1.25 meter okay so the height attained is 1.25 meter now finding out the time put the value for a equal to v minus u by t so rearrange it t equal to v minus u by a and then we will get time equal to 0 0.5 seconds clear now see the answer so the stone attains a height of 1.5 meter in 0 0.5 seconds clear everyone next see this uh, question number five a train is traveling at a speed of 90 km per hour brakes are applied so as to produce a uniform acceleration of minus 0 0.5 meter per second square find how uh, far the train will go before it is brought to rest okay so see here now the train is traveling at a speed of 90 km per hour so here the initial velocity is 90 km per hour then the brakes are applied so as to produce a uniform acceleration okay now here it is in a uh, kilometer per hour so convert it into meter per second don't forget to convert this into meter per second all right now we will get the initial velocity equal to 25 meter per second here the final velocity is 0 meter per second okay then the acceleration is given that is minus 0 0.5 meter per second square now what we have to find out we have to find out the distance travel that is the value for s okay now here the formula we will be using is yes twice as equal to v square minus u square okay guys now try to solve this by yourself pause the video for a minute if not definitely uh, i'm going to help you you can uh, see it now see here twice a s equal to v square minus u square so s equal to v square minus u square by twice a now by putting the values and then calculating it we will get s equal to 625 meter okay so the train travels a distance of 625 meter i hope everyone is clear next we will see the numericals based on graph now see this question Four cars A, B, C, and D are moving on a level road. Their distance versus time drops are shown in figure. Whose car is the slowest? Okay, now see here. Four cars A, B, C, and D are moving on a level road. And their distance versus time graphs are shown here. So we have to find out whose car is the slowest. So see the answer. We know that speed equal to slope of distance time graph. And here, the smaller the slope, the smaller is the speed. Now, can you tell me from here, from the figure, can you tell me uh, which car has got the smaller slope? Yes, from the figure, we can say that slope is minimum for car D. So, D is the slowest car. Have you got the answer? Okay. Now, see question number one. The distance time graph of three objects A, B, and C is shown. Study the graph and answer the following questions. So, study the graph here and answer the following questions. Which of the three is traveling the fastest? Are all three ever at the same point on the road? How far has C traveled when B passes A? And how far has B traveled by the time it passes C? Okay, now for finding out 1A, uh, we draw a line parallel to x-axis. Okay, 
from point O, P and Q. So from point O, P and Q, we draw a line parallel to the x-axis. Now see here, uh, A makes on angle theta A with the x-axis, this one. Okay, now B makes on angle theta B with the x-axis. Can you see it here? Theta B downward. Yeah, then uh, C makes on angle theta C with the x-axis. So now among theta A, theta B and theta C, which angle is greater? Can you tell me which angle is greater? Definitely angle uh, theta B is greater. Alright, now it is made by the object B. So for A, B is traveling the fastest. Now can you see, is there any uh, a common point of intersection for the objects A, B and C? Can you see, is there uh, a common point of intersection? No, right? So uh, for, for B, we can say that uh, there is no, there are never at the same point on the road. Alright? Okay, now point of intersection for the object B and A. Can you see? So from the point of intersection, draw a line perpendicular to x-axis. Okay, so I draw a line perpendicular to the x-axis. Now to find how far C has traveled, from the point of intersection, now draw a line perpendicular to y-axis. Now, uh, which intersects y-axis at 6.4 km? So for answer C, the C travels a distance of 6.4 km when B passes A. Alright, now see here, which intersects uh, y-axis at 4 km? So, does B travels a distance of 4 km when it passes C? I hope everyone is clear by seeing the graph. Okay, now see here. A driver of a car traveling at 52 km per hour applies the brakes and accelerator uniformly in the opposite direction. The car stops in 5 seconds. Another driver uh, going at 34 km per hour in another car applies his brakes slowly and stops in 10 seconds. On the same graph paper, plot the speed versus time graphs for two cars, which of the two cars travel further after the brakes were applied. Okay, now see here this graph is shown here. And by plotting the points, so we can write what are the given values. So velocity of the car, that is u1 equal to 52 km per hour. And velocity of the car 2, u2 equal to 42, oh, sorry, 34 km per hour. And the time t1 equal to 5 seconds and time t2 equal to 10 seconds. Now we have to find out the distance covered by the first car and distance covered by second car. Alright? Okay, now here the area under speed time graph represents distance traveled. Now let's solve it. So the distance covered by the first car equal to area of triangle AOB. Can you see this stated reason? Okay, so half into AO into OB. So we will get uh, half into 52 km per hour into 5. Now multiply it. So we will get... Uh, 36.1 meter okay now here the distance covered by the second car equal to area of triangle OCD then so half into OC into OD now put the values that we will get uh, how much meter yeah it is 47.2 meter so the answer is the second car travels farther after the brakes are applied okay done now see here question number two the speed time graph for a car is shown below. Find how far does the car travel in the first 4 seconds. Set the area on the graph that represents the distance traveled by the car during the period. Now for B, which part of the graph represents uniform motion of the car? Okay, now here the speed time graph for a car is shown. Now we have to find out how far does the car travel in the first 4 seconds. Okay, and Set the area on the graph that represents the distance traveled by the car during the period. Then we have to find out which part of the graph represents the uniform motion of the car. Now we have to find out the distance traveled in first 4 seconds and the part which represents the uniform motion. Now so let's solve it. See here for finding out the distance traveled in first 4 seconds, the area under speed time graph represents distance traveled. So distance travel in first 4 seconds 
equal area of seated region so here the seated region is similar to a triangle right it is similar to a triangle so here area of seated region equal to area of triangle now half into b into height base into height so put the values half into 4 into 6 so we will get area of seated region equal to 12 meter now for uniform uh, motion speed time graph is straight line parallel to x-axis so for uh, uniform motion the speed time graph is a straight line which is parallel to x-axis okay so for two for uh, part which represents the uniform motion uh, between the part of graph now between the six seconds to ten seconds represents the uniform motion of car can you see it here the graph between uh, six seconds to ten seconds it represents the uniform motion of the car so the answer is distance travel in first four seconds is 12 meter and the motion is uniform after the sixth second can you see it here okay now what can you say about the motion of an object whose distance time graph is a straight line parallel to the time axis so from here we can say that the object is stationary that is at rest okay next thing which can uh, what can you say about the motion of an object if its speed time graph is a straight line parallel to time axis now see here uh, in this speed time graph there is a straight line parallel to time axis so what can we say it indicates that the object is moving with uniform speed clear just try to remember this graph okay it is very important now what is the shape of velocity time graph for non uniformly accelerated motion so the velocity time graph for not uniformly accelerated motion can have any shape all right it has no specific shape it can be of any shape just remember it then see uh, draw the distance time graph for a car moving with non-uniform speed okay so this is the distance time graph so we have to show uh, a car moving with non-uniform speed so this is uh, for non-uniform speed now let's see that draw the velocity time graph of an object moving with uniform velocity so this is velocity time graph and we have to show a car moving with uh, uniform velocity so this is for uniform velocity just uh, practice these graphs okay guys now plot a speed time graph when the body is under non-uniform acceleration all right now see here this is a speed time graph where we have to plot when the body is under non-uniform acceleration the graph looks like this curvy one now plot a speed time graph when the body is under non-uniform retardation okay just remember it this is under non-uniform retardation so this is distance time graph we are showing the body is under unif uh, non-uniform retardation it looks like this half dome time okay now draw a velocity time graph when the speed changes alternatively okay so the speed changes alternatively so it looks uh, somewhat like this okay because the speed is changing alternatively now see here plot the velocity time graph when the velocity increases in a stepwise manner okay so here we have to plot a, in a velocity time graph where the velocity is increasing in a stepwise manner means in the shape of a uh, like kind of staircase step as you can see here so i hope everyone is clear